Brilliant. So, hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Canny Commuting. Welcome to episode five of the series that gives you the skills and confidence that you need to maybe try walking, cycling, or using public transport to get to work. My name's Andy, and I'm going to be looking after you today. Canny Commuting is brought to you by My Journey. Uh, in association with Sustrans, the charity that makes it easier for people to walk and cycle, and is funded by Highways England. So who am I? Well, I'm Andy, I am your canny commuter in chief, and I've been walking, cycling, and getting public transport to work in Winchester, Southampton, Eastleigh, Portsmouth, for about the last 15 years. And I'm gonna be joined by a number of people over the course of this series who are gonna share their experiences of how to make that active traveling commute as easy as possible. So today, I'm joined by Ray, who is going to introduce himself just now. Go for it, Ray. Hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be along, thank you, Andy. Um, punches, yeah. Punch is a, a specialty of mine, hopefully. A um, few punches <laughs> over the years, so I'm looking forward to the session. I'm going to run a little practical session that hopefully people will find interesting. And a few tips um, I will put in on how to fix those punches quickly and get moving again. Um, but if punches are keeping you up all night, have no fear because Ray is here. Brilliant, Ray. So as Ray said, today we are talking all about punctures. The number of people I've met over the years who said one of the reasons that they don't want to try and ride their bike to work is that they're worried that they don't know how to deal with punctures and that you'll end up late if you get one or that you'll end up not being able to fix it or anything like that. So today we are really hoping that we'll be able to demystify all of the issues around flat tyres and getting you back on the road with the absolute minimum possible fuss. Ray's going to talk to us for about 15 minutes, and at the end of that, we're going to take questions. So if you have any questions, please stick them in the chat. And again, and I know this, no, I say this every week, if you could stick in the chat for us who you are and which workplace you come from, that really helps us in terms of knowing who we're reaching and which workplaces we're reaching out to. That's absolutely brilliant. And also to let you know, we are, as ever, recording this. So if you don't want to appear on the camera, you shouldn't. But if you'd really like to make sure your picture doesn't appear, please turn your cameras off. But without further ado, Ray, please take it away. Thanks, Andy. Great. So welcome, everybody. Very hot today, of course. Now here in the garden, I have a bike. Now I've just been riding along and I've got a puncher. How's about that? Hey, just in time for the show. So things to consider of course right so in generally what happens is you either have a slow puncher you know so you've got a really tiny hole um and you might make it home or you might make it to your workplace so you can hang in there you might want to just pump a little bit and get some air in um and then of course you've got the ones that just go on you bang done right so you can't ride those anymore and you might damage your wheel if you ride any further so they're the two main ones and are you hearing me okay i'm hearing you loud and clear ray Awesome, thank you. Right, so um, considerations of what to bring with you. I think we'll probably run through some little kit, Annie, um, some tips on that. Um, tire levers will definitely come up in the conversation. Make sure they're plastic, right? You don't want metal ones that might damage your the rim of your wheel. Plastic ones are great. I really like these. In fact, these are free Mountain Bike UK magazine ones. So I'll show you this little cheeky one. It's called a Crank Brothers. Gives you a little bit more leverage for those tires that are really hard to get off. But what I'm going to show you today is how to get your tire off, hopefully not even need these at all. So it's a little technique. And once you know it and practice it, you may not even need your tire levers. Of course, you're going to need a pump, decent pump. Um, one of my favorites here, it's called a Topeak Mountain Morph. It's quite big, but it's like a mini track pump. You like these, Andy? Have you got one? Um, I've got one right in front of me here as we speak, Ray. They're absolutely perfect. Ah. So, you know, it just means that you're going to be able to pump up that tire a little bit quicker and off you go. You know, small ones, big ones, all sorts. Ones with a gauge are quite handy, but it's not essential. And if you want to get really into pumping up tires quick, then you've got CO2 cartridges. OK, so you need a little bit of training on them, um, but they will pump up your tire very quickly. Punch repair kit. If you decide that you want to actually fix your puncture and you're in a tube, while you are there, then a decent punch repair kit with the glue, the patches, and your sandpaper and a bit of chalk, essential. That will make a really nice um, patch, really nice repair. But I would say you're better off just carrying one, maybe even two for really big trips, but one spare tube with you. 
And if you're buying your inner tube, a little tip from Ray as well. Um, obviously, you've got two types. You have here, this is a presta. So what you've got here is your little cap on there, and then you twist this piece here, and that allows the air to come in and out. And you've also got a locking ring on there too. So that helps put it in place. Okay, I'm a big fan of the Presta ones. And then you've also got the Schrader type, which is kind of like your, what you call a car valve, the thicker one. If in doubt though, I'd always buy the Presta ones. Don't know about you, Andy, but I find they're great because you, know, you might be out with friends who need a tube, and the presser, of course, will fit in both sides holes because it's thinner. All right, so a little tip in there. Okay, let's do the puncture repair. First of all, think about, you know, you might be at the side of a road, so make sure you get in a really safe place, somewhere that you've not got cars or traffic whizzing around behind you, you know, go around the corner somewhere. If it's hot like this, go somewhere shady. It might take longer than you realize. But actually, once you get good at this, you could probably get it in, a, you can get a wheel off in under a minute and repaired and off you go. So hopefully my tips will show you. Now, you're probably all aware that sometimes you can turn your bike upside down, right? Yes, you can do that. Um, it kind of, sometimes it can be easier. Uh, I would make sure that if I'm doing that, I would put it down on something that's not going to damage the seat or the handlebars, you know, or put it on some grass, something like that. Um, my personally, there's a much quicker way though, without worrying about upside down and the, you know carrying the weight of it and everything else. And the first thing you've got to do, guys, is make sure. Um, sometimes I've got a puncher and I know I'm just going to stop somewhere. Is I will always put my gear, my rear gear, in the highest gear. That's your smallest cog, right? Your small cog. So in a sec, I'll show you that. But that's the first thing I would do. Let's move around here a bit. Can you all see? Andy, is that good? That's perfect, Ray. Yeah, we can okay. see that. So by putting it in the smallest cog, it means that I can get the rear wheel in and out quickly. And the rear wheel is perhaps the one that people worry about more because it's harder to get in and out. Right? So let's work on the rear wheel. So I've already got my gear shifter in there. Um, if I'm not moving, I can lift up the bike, change gear, put it in the right one. Then I've got my options for getting the wheel out. Now I've got quick release, big fan of quick releases. If you haven't got a quick release bolt, then you're gonna need yourself a spanner, 15 millimeter spanner. And of course that is gonna mean carrying these. So when buying a bike, look for a quick release lever, it's much easier. In order to get the wheel out, I'm gonna to need to disconnect my brakes temporarily as well. Now this chap here, let's see if I can get in there. Can you see that, everybody? This you is can the, indeed. the noodle. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, well, I hold the camera, disconnect the noodle. All right. So bear in mind, folks, and this is easy to forget, when you've finished and fixed your puncture, you want to make sure that's reconnected. I'll probably do that in a minute. Someone remind me. Okay. So I've disconnected the brakes. Now, getting the wheel out. Easy peasy if you are in that gear. People worry about this, but let's see. So quick release, boom, out it goes. Quick shift down with your hand. Sometimes the quick release will get stuck a little bit. Push down and that's your wheel out, all right? I've got my bike in a little stand. So let's face it, we're not gonna have a stand with us. So I'm gonna lay it on the bike on the left-hand side. This is the same thing they would do in a race, really, isn't it, Andy? To get, you know, a really speedy, yeah, only slower. Put a wheel straight back in there. Okay. So, got my wheel off, got my puncture. I need to figure this out whereabouts it is so I can fix it or put in a new tube. Can you all see that okay, Andy? Yep. Right. So, what I'm going to do first now, I've actually got a little bit of air left inside my tube, but um, let's pretend that. I've had a full puncture and I have no air in here at all, right? So that's your standard one, really. Okay, so I'm just taking all my air out. Now, the wheel, rim, can you all see this one, which I made earlier? Is actually like a V shape, it's like a little valley. So a little tip that if you can 
push the bead, that is the side of the tire, right? Start away from the valve side, the valve side's here. Start the other side and I'm pinching. So I've got my fingers at the back, thumbs at the front. And all I'm doing is pinching it tight into the wheel. So when I get to this side, I don't even need tire levers, okay? I can run my hand, but I would say if you're running your hand around, be very careful. I'd usually put a pair of gloves on. In fact, Andy, do you put gloves in your bag? Maybe some, you know, just a couple of blue ones, neoprene yeah. ones. My, my punch repair cat has a set of gloves in it for precisely this reason. Um, don't take much weight, do they? All right, so here we go then, guys. I've got my tire off. I'm only gonna say take one side off. Now, I um, heard someone chatting about this the other day, actually, Andy, about um, should I take my whole wheel off at all? Well, you can repair a puncture in the similar way that while it's still on the bike. The only thing with that, sometimes you put it back, there's nothing worse, is there, than you find another puncture when you put it all back on. So I would suggest take the wheel out, to be honest, and make you know proper checks. And when you know a few tips, it doesn't take long, okay? But it is possible to repair it. You would just pull your tube out, but you have to know exactly where the puncture is, and that can be the issue. So if I knew it was there, I'll still on the bike, patch it up, in it goes. Okay, let's see now. So this is pretty standard stuff now. I'm going to take my tube out. I've got a pressed, uh, sorry, a straighter tube here. Okay. Now, um, Andy, some people said to me, how do I, you know, how can I find it's a tiny little hole? How can I find well, what I'm going to do? Grab my pump, put some air in it. So this might be the side of the road doing all this. Little tip as well, if it's really busy and loud and you don't have a bucket of water on your bike with you or a river near you or something to find the bubbles and find the hole. Um, you can wet your lips. You can put it against your eyebrows. And generally run around and you will find that little hole but however this is all about whether you want to repair it while you're actually out and about i would do this when i get home so i would just carry a spare tube a lot simpler but nevertheless this is the way to do it so let's presume that i have found my hole here now i'm not going to run through the hole of patching it but i will give you a quick idea of what i would do so I have found myself a tiny little hole that's causing me trouble. I've got my first, my first, my punch repair kit. I clean it off, get a little bit of sandpaper, there it is. I mark it with a bit of chalk. So sometimes you find it and then, oh no, I've lost it again. Put my glue on, leave it for a few minutes so it's kind of semi-dry. And then I would just get the patch and on it goes. And also guys, I would also leave these patches here very good. These patches here, um, I would leave the um, plastic on the start on there as well because it keeps all the dust and things off. Just leave it on. All right. So one side sticky, stick it on and leave the little plastic top coating on. Just a little tip there. Something I like, and I think um, I was chatting to Andy one day about this, is little um, what you call leeches or pre-glued patches. OK, lots of different brands. These are Park Tour ones. They're called Super Patch GP2s. Very small. In there, all it is, is is basically a patch with glue on, a lot simpler, a lot more straightforward. Okay. Right. So let's let's say that Ray has either repaired his tube or he's got another tube out. Let's put it back in. Now, before, before we put this back in, this is very, very important. By the way, I'm just leaving enough air so that when I put this back in to the tire. It will make a nice shape and it won't get buckled inside and cause you trouble later. Right. Now, when you're checking, you obviously something has caused the puncture in the first place. Could be a thorn. Um, you know, I was on a course once actually, and someone had a syringe which went through the wheel, which is why I would say to people, Andy, that be really careful about running your hands around it. I would visually inspect it go ah there's my thorn great and then what i would tend to do i wouldn't mess about with it with my fingers i would use a tire lever to snap that thorn off then i would also carry on checking because it was it's always possible there's another hole all right okay or sometimes i will run a cloth round first 
or a glove, just something to protect your fingers, basically. Right, I'm happy. I've taken my thorn out. That's what caused the trouble. I'm now going to put back, oh, a little tip, actually, folks. So you'll notice on my, my tire and my wheel, most tires have the logo, um, the manufacturer's logo on the side. Here we've got in specialized Enduro. If you line that up with the actual valve, firstly, it's quite cool, but also you'll be able to find your valve easier. All right. Okay. So all we've got to do, got a little bit of air in my, my uh, inner tube. I'm going to pop that back in here. Now, sometimes what happens, tell this is a live show, you've got a piece of rubber that runs around the rim here. Can you, can you just see that, Andy? Yep. Okay, it's like a spoke protector here. That moves around inside, okay? So be aware of that if you're thinking, where's that hole gone? Um, and then it goes, all right? So then all I've got to do, because I've only taken off one side of the tire, then all I'm going to do is pop this one, just get a bit of space around here. Start from the top, the valve. Work my way around. Put the snake back in the bed. Good night. Got a nice shape to it. Then I'm going to start at the valve with my fingers again. All right. And I'm going to do a very similar thing. I might take a bit of air out, actually. But let's have a go. Relatively loose on the rim, this one. So I work my way around. Hopefully you can all see that. I'm um, hooking it into my hips here, actually, is a good way of doing it. It gives you that leverage and, you know, doesn't hurt your back. Pop it back in. Okay. Um, and then it's a case of pumping it up. Now, make sure on the tyre, it gives you your PSI. Now, on this tyre, the pounds per square inch, it says minimum 25, maximum 55. Now, don't make the mistake I've seen someone once. Minimum 25, so they were pumping it for 25 minutes, all right? This is about pressure. So <laughs> get the pressure right, because if you get it right, you will not get as many punches, and you definitely won't get one called a snake bite puncher, all right? Um, which is, or a pinch flat. That is where the rim, it takes a whack, maybe on a curb or stone you've gone over, and it and the tire pinches against the rim and causes a couple of two holes. So you end up two holes in there, which would be quite hard to actually, um, to fix and repair. Okay, wheel back in. Now, because I've got my gears in that position, in theory, grab my saddle, keep my back straight, I'm not doing my back in. Right, I'm holding my left, you see that, Andy? Right, with the left hand there. Now, all I'm going to do is push the rear derailleur onto there, and I find my cog, okay? And what should happen is that. Boom, done. So I do up my quick release, making sure that's nice and tight. Okay, let's see if anyone remembered what I needed to do at the end. Here we go. And that is to do up my noodle to make sure my brakes are going to be functioning again. Okay. Once that's done, we're away. Okay. Any questions at this stage? We've got anything coming through, Andy? That we 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 I've I've had a few questions that people have asked me prior to today, so I'm right. going to give you those just now. Um. One of the things that someone has asked me is, is there a difference between different kinds of tyre that makes them easier to get on and off? Yeah, great question, that. Um, you find that sometimes a road bike, you know, with the very slim tyres, tend to be um, very, very kind of tight on the rim of the wheel. Mountain bike tyres can be a bit easier. So similar hybrid tyres, you know, a bit thin, a bit narrow, can be trickier to do that. But to be honest, if you understand that thing I told you earlier about pinching the rim, if you need to use tire levers though, just make sure two is normally plenty. If you can see this all right. Um, little health and safety tip here as well, because I've done it and I was, is say I want to pull out that tire, Andy, around here. I hook it in there. I hook one on my spoke, all right? Leave it there. 
but put your hand on that one while you put another one in about 10 15 centimeters away all right because that one sometimes goes ping and can hit you in the eye all right but yeah if you understand the pinch principle of getting that into the, the middle of the rim of the wheel you won't have any trouble with any tire okay and then i can just go all the way around with my other lever and it'll come off does that help that does help. I mean, one, one thing I would add to that is that some tyres are some tires describe themselves as having what's called a folding or a Kevlar bead, and some have a, a wire bead. And the ones with the folding or Kevlar bead can be a lot easier to get off the bike. Yeah, good one, um, Andy. We've got another one that again came into me. You talked about the various different ways of pumping it up. Would you carry a pump or would you carry carbon dioxide? Um, pump 99% of the time, to be honest. The carbon dioxide ones, they're a bit of a space saver, but actually um, they're only kind of a one hit. So sometimes they can go wrong. You put them on and perhaps it leaks or you don't get it all in there. Really, I would say if you're a competitor or racing, but I would say carry a normal pump, keep it simple. But pra practice using all these tools you have before you go out riding. And I would say punch repair really is about practicing on different tires before you go riding. Yeah. Fab. We've had a, a question come in from Joe. Is there any reason why you just lay the bike down on its left-hand side? Great question, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. So you might have seen um, the gears of the rear, the rear derailleur. Um, it's very, very fragile. Okay. So, oh, can you all see that? So, if at the back there, you've got all your gears and gubbins. Now, that thing is called a gear hanger. And um, once you bend that, your gears sometimes won't work properly. So, all you're doing is always put your bike down on the left side, simple as, and it will protect it. And I would just throw in there, and you also stands on a bike. I personally not a fan of stands on a bike. I think they, well, they add weight, they can get caught in your wheel, they become loose quite easily. So, your decision, but no need really to have a stand unless you know you've got maybe a town bike and you want to keep it upright. Lay it on the floor, left hand side. Gears up to heaven. Super. Um, we've had a question come in from Tim. Uh, how do you know what inner tube to buy? Hi, Tim. Well, on the tyre, you're really relating it, Tim, to the size of the tyre. On the tyre, it gives you your measurements. You'll see things like uh, 29 inch or 700 C. Uh, let's have a look. This one here says to me, can you see? Might not yep, see it. I can well. see that. Um, 29 times 1.9 stroke 2.35. So that's quite cool. So this is super thin, so maybe a bit lighter. So that's a 29 inch wheel, but it's also got a range. So it will fit between those two minimums, maximums. Yeah. And that's about it. And Andy, really on that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, inner tubes are kind of much of a muchness. You can spend a lot of money on inner tubes, but at the end of the day, you're just going to put holes in them. It's worth saying that the, the, the first number you see on the inner tube is the diameter of the wheel. So that, that 26, 27.5, 29, 700 is how big the wheel is. And that second number with the range is how fat your tire is. Just to confuse things slightly, the, t the, the wheels that come on mountain bikes are listed usually in inches because they came from America. So your mountain bikes will be in 29 inches, etc. And road bikes tend to be in centimeters or millimeters because they come from Europe. And that second number is how fat your tire is. So the, the mountain bike ones will be in, so on that one, 1 1.75 to 2.3 inches, whereas yeah, so so where, where Tim says your 700 by 35 is 700 millimetres diameter wheel with a 35 millimetre diameter tyre in terms of how fat it is. So that, they're what you're looking for. Um, Ray, do you know anything about silicon tubes? Which apparently no. is not something you put in your iPhone. <laughs> um, I was going to talk a little bit, Andy, about um, silicon tube, maybe a different jargon. So yeah. I, I understand it. tubeless, tubeless tires. Yeah, that's really good because Tim's asked about tubeless as well. Ah, so some of my bikes have got, um, this is just, you know, this is a muck off brand. There's loads available stands and so on. No puncture, seedless, tubeless sealant. So if you know nothing about 
tubeless tyres, what it means is the inner tube that was inside is totally gone. So you're left with just the rim of the wheel and your tyre. Now, there are ways of pretty much making them work together and sealing. However, most wheels and tyres now will tell you they are tubeless compatible. All right. So when you buy a bike new, some of my friends bought a new bike at the weekend um, and it came with inner tubes, took them out. Now, and put this in. This is sealed basically, it's like yogurt, this stuff, it's like strawberry yogurt. In it goes, a few ounces of that. And what it does, it's very clever. So I was on a ride at the weekend and I know that I got a couple of punches, Annie, that would have caused me to stop, you know, change the tube, patch it up. I could hear it working. So I went over a thorn or whatever in the forest and I heard this kind of st, st. So the liquid runs around the inside. Okay, once it's all pumped up and sealed and it finds the hole, seals it with little tiny little modules, little micro modules, it's very clever. And that is really it for tubeless. But I would recommend if you do a lot of riding, go tubeless. Yep, I, I feel very much yeah. the same. My my commuting bike and my, my mountain bike all running tubeless. It just means that you're less likely to get a puncture. It, it really does. And you can you can worry about it a lot less. Joe's clarified that she meant latex tubes, not silicon. Do you know anything about them? Latex? No, not really. OK. Well, the, only thing I, the only thing I can think of maybe, Joe, it might be that some you can buy inner tubes with sealant inside them. Yeah. Maybe it's those. They're, yeah. they're, um, personally, not really a fan. Adds quite a lot of weight. You're better just going full tubeless. I mean, it's worth saying that tubeless can be quite a challenge to get set up in the first place, particularly yeah, if, if it's not a, a, a tubeless compatible wheel and you're doing things with it. But it's it's one of these things where you, where you load the effort at the front and you you reap the rewards later. I, I, I'm a huge fan, although when it does go wrong, it does tend to go properly wrong. But you can still patch tubeless wheels when they go wrong. Uh, I've yeah, got some at the bottom of... So I carry on my bike this thing, which is it's just an old water bottle with a puncture repair kit and stuff in it. And in the bottom of this, I've got some things that look like kind of secondhand pipe cleaners. And what you can do is that you can stick them in the hole and the tubeless seals around it. And they're really, really good. They're, they are absolutely superb. Ah, oh, believe it or not, we are just about out of time. Goodness me. I know. One little tip, Andy. I'll throw in quick. Let's Go on then. An extra free. Um, to, if toothpaste tube, now one day you will have a puncture that's so big you can't even use a patch kit, all right? But you just need a way of getting home and you've got a big split in the side of your tire. Toothpaste tubes are amazing, really strong, light, tiny. Put them in your little kit. Um, they can be really useful. Um, and valve caps, they don't do a lot on them either. Your decision with valve caps, you don't really need them a lot yep. of the time. When it comes to those massive patches, I have a really expensive solution to this problem. You're going to like this. If you can see, if I change the angle of that very slightly, you can see in the back of my phone, I've got a £10 note. <laughs> like and this it. goes out with me everywhere. But the thing about the new ones is because they're plastic, they are airtight. So if, in, uh, if yeah. push comes to shove, I've got a £10 note with me all the time. But if I put a massive hole in my tyre, I've got a really expensive tyre boot that I can stick inside it. Though if you are going to do that, do make sure that you remember to take it out again when you fix the tyre <laughs> properly. Because so yeah, so you, you can go to the pub, right? If you can't fix it, you can go to the pub anyway. Yeah. And it. that is another tip. If you are by the side of the road, firstly, don't panic. You've, you, you know, you, you've got time to look after, but don't be terrified to, to say, actually, I've had to go at this and it's just not going up or, you know, something's gone wrong. I've had an occasion in the past where my pump broke as I was part way through this, at which point, you know, kind of all bets are off. Do not be scared to go to a bike shop or to, if you're somewhere where there's mm -hmm. lots of cyclists, just stand there with your hand out looking a bit helpless and people will stop and help you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ray. You've been absolutely brilliant. You've been you've been very absolute welcome. stuff. Very welcome. Um, we are happy to talk to people afterwards. Ray is available on Twitter. Uh, he is at Bike it SH. That's I well. am on Twitter um, at Sustrans Andy. Uh, if you want to know more about what's going on, our webpage is um, it's www.myjourneyhampshire.com slash canny commuting, which is relatively easy to remember. If you're watching us on YouTube, it's the link that's below me just now. 
um, as are our Twitter handles. Again, if you are watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the video. It really helps us. We are back here again next week when I am going to talk about how you can work getting your bike and yourself to work using the train to set you free from mm. long distances. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. We are starting next week, season two of this. There are more episodes coming. We're just trying to finalize all the speakers just now. We have ever so slightly overrun. But thank you all very much for coming along. You've been absolutely brilliant. We will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Keep on rolling.